Out the Bayou is presented by Community Coffee. Beyond good coffee, there's Community Coffee. Coming up this week on Out the Bayou. You know, my dad used to tell me, son, no matter what you are cooking, if you put crab meat in it or on it, you can't lose. With sound advice, it's good that we live in the best place to get crab meat, year round. Today, the best place or people to get it from, Luke's Seafood in Dulac, Louisiana. Family owned and literally family run. The Lukes are true Louisiana seafood gatherers. From oysters, shrimp, and crab, if it's running, they are catching it. Today's excursion to run about 120 crab traps in hopes of a good payday. It's hard work, but some of the finest crab comes from this area. This I know for sure, because I brought these home with me. Perks of the job. Once dockside, we will head up and over to Mandeville, Louisiana specifically to Zachary's restaurant. Cozy is the key word with a side of personal attention to detail. It's lump crab meat salad that you will not soon forget. For the past 15 years, I've made a living in the outdoors of the Bayou State. While producing national and local TV in Louisiana, based on our world-class fishing and hunting, I have been lucky enough to meet the people who work and live gathering, growing, and preparing all that makes our culture completely unique. This is their story, and it begins where it was born, straight out the bayou. Stories with great taste. Luke's Seafood is located just off Shrimpers Row in Dulac, Louisiana. You can't miss the big yellow warehouse right in the front. When it comes to seafood, if it's in season, they usually have it. A quick knock on the door and Miss Trudy will get you what you need. Trudy runs the biz end of Luke's Seafood, but don't think she won't jump in a boat and carry her own in the water. A simple routine after 13 years, you just know what you gotta do. Okay. But today it's husband Tim and son Andy. They will help us understand more about catching blue crab as it's been done for many generations in their family. I've been a commercial fisherman since I'm nine years old. I ran my first shrimp boat at the age of 13. The days start early and the crabbers always begin the day in debt. Catfish heads are not free, but they are the best bait. And if you are lucky, maybe you'll find a few mullet to offset the cost. The crabs bite on the mullet, so I'll come out ahead if I use the mullet. Slow like the crabs are right now, I can use the mullet and I'm gonna make a few more dollars because the bait's $18 a box. When they're dead, you snap them, should it go to bleeding, the oil. Yeah, well, see, you're a fisherman, I'm not. I've been out of school since I've been in the fourth grade, you know? And the only reason I've been out of school since I'm in the fourth grade, my dad fell sick and I was supporting for a couple of years. I had to support my mama and, and three or four other kids at the house. Actually, Andy graduated this last year and this is just really making a living at it. So you're talking about there's a difference between doing it for fun and making a living at it? Yeah. Yes. But you know, my daddy always did tell me, you got to make fun of what you do for a living. Otherwise, it's not a living. It's not a living. You know, you gotta love what you're doing. When we come back, we will get to the job at hand. Will the day bear fruit or will we be eating mullet stew? Ever since my great grandfather started Community Coffee, we've been obsessed with going beyond. Beyond pride to passion. Beyond using 100% premium coffee beans to using only the top 10% in the world. Beyond commitment to a personal guarantee that every cup of community coffee is one that we proudly serve at our kitchen tables. Beyond good, there's great. And beyond good coffee, there's community coffee. Today we are out to gather blue crab with the Luke's of Luke Seafood. Out of the gate early, but early is every day when you are crabbing for a paycheck. 
depending on what I got planned for that day. Go crabbing, go trumping, working at the crab dock. Yeah, that is a good That's haul. a good trap. Yeah. What kind of numbers are you looking in each trap? What's a good trap? Always you're looking for the most. But I mean, a decent trap, a dozen, 15 crab. Trap, to the trap. Doing things is what? Ooh. Oh. Careful. So he does miss. <laughs> I just put a little excitement in everybody's life, that's all. <laughs> Fuel bill just went up. See? What is it like working with your family? It's a pain. <laughs> I love working with my family. It just they got hard time understanding my ways. It's a real pain. You guys are, are more, I say, technically advanced than some of the other guys that are still just doing it by hand. I can't say technically advanced, it's just. <laughs> technically the old way of crabbing is what? It's running traps by hand. And so at each trap, what do you have to do? I mean, we're just running by and well, raking them up. Well, you see, the ones that run by hand, they don't have to bill a rake, and they don't have to put a corner bar. Okay. Because see, this corner bar makes your cage a lot stronger when you're pulling it with the rake. I can, we can run traps a lot faster, you know, so we can run a lot more traps in a day, you know, with the rake. Like today, I probably lost two traps not knowing the area and whatnot, like my dad explained. Hey, look, I'm gonna tell you, I got this job down. I don't know what I'm doing, but I got it down. Nothing's bit me yet. I'm not bleeding. Now, before you say, I think I wanna get into crabbing, well, consider this. Crabs are a lot like fish. Sometimes they bite, sometimes not. Like right now, you get into your, your fall and your winter months, so you kinda wanna current lines, deeper water, because mm -hmm. your female got a tendency when the tide drops to go into your deeper water. Tons of what I call street knowledge goes into crabbing. Knowing the area, tides, trenches, trenosis, placement of traps where the crabs are moving. Yes, crabs do move, a lot. Now is there a way that you're placing it in the currents or it doesn't matter as long as it's on the bottom? No, different areas, different places, different crabs, different ways. You can pick up all these traps and move them one day. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I say Andy. It goes on and on. And did I mention the expense of just getting one trap in the water? It is an expensive hard business. This year I, pro I probably invested $30,000 into my business. I had a, a 24 foot Carolina, busted a hole in it, I had to go buy a new one. Right at $17,000. An engine, $18,000. And when you're looking at traps at $35 a piece, you're looking at serious money. And you can't fish with no, nothing less than 300 traps. Man, there's more hardhead catfish than Kevin Ford catches in a show here. When you use pogey, you get a lot of hardhead catfish. Pokey attracts catfish. A lot. So. See that right there? That's a problem. You eat old crab. Besides the shells, I don't I believe. Right? I don't know, you know everything. This is kind of like the wild hog of the water. Uh, really no predator. You don't want to get stung by one of these things because that's a trip to the hospital. And they eat every single thing. Shrimp, crab. And if you get stung by one, always carry your uh, bottle of Clorox. I mean, th this is truly what they call a hardhead catfish. You can see it's got a little bit of variations down the side. What we're baiting the traps with today is, is actually a blue cat. But uh, these things right here, they're good for nothing. Odd jobs. I guess that's what happens when you become a guest worker on a crab boat. Picking hardhead catfish out of the crab box, locating bycatch. You know, those extra varmints that figure their way into the trap for a free meal. There are a couple of things that you catch in these traps with crabs that you don't want to throw back. This right here is one of my favorite bycatches on any day. Undersized crabs. So that crab right there, that's a, that's a legal crab or an illegal? That's a legal crab. This is a legal crab, so yeah, that's that five Yeah, that crab inches. right there is about five and a half inches. And what he's saying is, is they're measuring, when they say tip to tip, these two points right here, it has to be five inches across to be legal. That's a what? Or maybe even a packed that, crab. A packed crab, yeah. This is millions of eggs in here. And that's illegal to keep? Get, that's illegal to keep in Louisiana. Yeah, well, we don't want to keep them anyway. We want no. to go back in and, right. and drop those eggs. 
Well, how long will she stay like this? That crab right there, looking at it, I'd probably say two weeks. And then she'll just drop and them off? And then she'll just, she'll just drop them off. And then this will turn black. All that sponge will turn black. And then the crab will die. So I'm told. That's sad, man. But when your job doesn't require total focus, you tend to start noticing things that, well, seem to find their way into a little white bucket hidden behind the captain. Things that are totally none of your business and you should never ask about. Unless, well, you're like me and you just gotta know. What we got here? We got, this dude doesn't look like the same as everybody else. No, stone crab. As he, this, the law on this is from here to here, it's gotta be two and three quarter inches. Okay, that's the lock. So you break them off, uh -huh. you throw the rest of the crab away, and you put him in the box. Because that goes? Because that goes to your stomach at night. Because that's good eating. Right. That's great eating. But only one claw? Well, the other one didn't, other make, the one didn't make the lock. The other one didn't make the lock. Look at your claws. Oh, look at that. Bonus. Okay. You got one legal. You got one legal. We each one of these crabs has one, one claw. No, that's you get some much, crab that some, got two. That's but the legal. last two we pulled up, you know, this one, one side is legal, one side is not. Now that that's gonna grow right back. That's gonna grow right back. So we're not actually damaging this crab. We're just, hey, we're taking the candy off. That's right. And then we're throwing them back. You get, you're getting the goodies. Look, there's there's another one. Look, look at the meat. There's enough meat in here. Probably more meat in here than is in the whole blue crab. Yeah. That's a lot of meat. I didn't even know these guys existed out here. These are stone crabs, and then, guess what? He's gonna go back in the water, and that's gonna grow right back. We'll catch him a few again. months from now. A few months. Relieve him of his arms again. Yeah. Learn another stuff too. This box right here. That box is for the people we sell crabs to. This box over here. This box is for the pickup truck when we get home. <laughs> When we come back, we will wrap up the crab line and see if we were successful enough to muster a profit. You know when you taste a great cup of coffee? You know it as soon as you pick it up, you smell it. You know an aroma that, that smells great, it kind of captures my imagination. It's a flavor impression that, that, that follows all the way through till right now. You know, until 30 seconds after that sip of coffee, uh, you get this rich, smooth flavor. This is a, a great cup of coffee. Forty, fifty traps in a line. When you fish late in the wintertime, you fish in open water in the Gulf and stuff, you'll put up to 60 traps in a line. Good. Some lines you got 25, 30 traps. Some lines you got 10, 15 traps. Just depending where you're fishing at, the area you're fishing. A front will come through. To where the crabs is plentiful. The dock's paying 55 cents a pound. 55? 55 cents a pound. So you gotta so work your ass off just to pay for gas and boat and people before you ever make a penny. That's right. I don't think people understand that. As far as getting the numbers to make a dollar, well, the Terrebonne Estuary is one of the two best places for quality crab. The Pontchartrain area being the other. Lake Pontchartrain is known to produce big crabs. Over here, you got a lot of marsh, a lot of open water, uh, bayous and stuff and all, and, and, and I think that's why we got a good quality of crab. This is female? Well, actually. Female, you're what you look for on a female. I know what I look for on a female. <laughs> well, you look at the skirt. Skirt. Look at the skirt. So if you got a skirt. A female. You're good to go. Female has a skirt, male does not. Male, no color on the claws. Female, bright orange. So that's the difference. Every once in a while, you'll pick males out. That's where I make my money at on male crabs. When you're just select grabbing male crabs, is that a better quality better, of crab? Yeah, better quality, yeah. 
the restaurants You'll get prefer. more, you'll get more for that male crowd than what you'll get for that female crowd. Okay, so they're heavier or just they're always more full? No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, just to, people like to eat male crabs better than females. We ended our run with enough crab to pay the piper. But seafood families face a lot more than weather these days. Higher fuel costs, labor costs, equipment costs, and repair, especially in a saltwater environment. It takes at least a couple guys, 300 or better traps, to, to make a decent living these days. To make a profit and a good living all the time would drive the price of seafood out of the reach of consumers. What do you think one crab would be worth by the time he gets to a plate? One crab. Maybe five bucks. But this is what they do. It's what they love. It's what defines them. And it's the reason they endure day after day, no matter what is thrown at them. Work hard and live the best you can. Past generations taught it to them. America should look at their example. When we return, our groceries head to Mandeville, Louisiana, and Zachary's Restaurant, a great recipe you can impress your guests with. This coffee is made with four generations of family care, and it requires a lot of attention to detail. There's a lot of human interaction. And all along the way, we're trying to ensure that what we expect from that coffee is going to be delivered, that the quality is there, and that the flavor is present and it's going to be a great coffee experience. A robot cannot do this. Without a personal touch, without personal care, uh, you're only going halfway. Community coffee goes the whole way in delivering that rich, smooth flavor experience. It's always been a dream of mine. Um, you know, I guess just a lot of hard work and dedication got me to where I am now. We're going to have a tarragon poached crab meat and butter with a hibiscus vinaigrette, and Creole heirloom tomato salad. I really enjoy cooking food and, you know, it brings people together, puts smiles on their faces. First with the salad dressing, add a little touch of the Creole mustard, and some nice clove honey, about two cloves, some crushed garlic, some olive oil. I'm going to add a little bit of the hibiscus vinegar. So that was really my biggest thing, how I got into cooking, and then uh, me just getting to open up Zachary's restaurant here in Mandeville is only a plus. You know, it's a light salad dressing, um, something that goes well with the tomatoes, not gonna overpower it, some kosher salt, and some fresh cracked black pepper. You know, I believe that good food comes out of small kitchens. Heirloom tomatoes, different colors, they all taste different, different shapes and sizes, so it makes them so unique. I try and take what I grew up eating down here in South Louisiana um, with the food that's classically served all over the place and throw my twist. I'm going to do a bigger chunk on them. Gives it a more of a rustic look. It's more fun and it'll showcase the colors. In Louisiana, food mimics life. We have so many different cultures and cuisines and people with different um, backgrounds. You know, you can get heirloom tomatoes at any specialty food store, and fresh market, Whole Foods. And if you can't get them, a good Creole tomato will work just as fine. The vinaigrette we made. Just give it a nice little drizzle. Right on top of the tomatoes. We're gonna give it a light toss. Now this liquid right here is just some regular unsalted butter, some fresh kosher salt, and some fresh tarragon leaves. You want to get this just warm. You do not want it boiling and simmering. You just want it warm. We're going to take some fresh Louisiana blue crab and we're going to put it right into the pot. And essentially what we're doing is we're poaching the crab meat in tarragon butter. Now this only needs to be put in here for just about a minute, minute and a half, just to get the chill off the fresh crab meat. Now we got the crab meat poached. We're going to go ahead and plate it on up. Louisiana blue crab is the best crab meat you can get anywhere else in the country, hands down. There's nothing better. It tastes sweeter. It's bigger. There's nothing better than Louisiana blue crabs. Some beautiful heirloom tomatoes. 
They're all tossed in the vinaigrette. It's really cool to mix them up with the colors, you know, and the different sizes. All this does is just add a little character to the dish. It doesn't have to be perfect. I really like the way um, tomatoes pair well with, with crab meat, as well as tarragon. With the butter, of course, you know, everything's better with butter. Take our tarragon poached crab meat. Very pretty. Very sweet. And what tarragon does, gives it that flavor like anise almost. It's very subtle licorice flavor, which goes very well with crab meat. Instead of just, you know, throwing a salad together and pouring crab meat on top, it's a deconstructed version of something that people can make at home. You get restaurant quality food and it's just as great, if not even better than what people think it is. There is nothing like a Louisiana blue crab. But these are microgreens. Um, I use these as garnish for a lot of things here at the restaurant at Zachary's. They're all different baby sprouts for different vegetables and herbs. They have different complex and flavors. So it's very nice to put on top. It doesn't really get any healthier than this. Um, and it's for people who, you know, who have food allergies, um, who just really can't, you know, doesn't want anything heavy for dinner. It's definitely a, a, a it'll just fill you up. It's just a great dish to have. Nice summer salad. Uh, when crab meat's running, big lumps, it's gonna be beautiful for any table and anybody can make it at home. When people come into Zachary's restaurant, I want them to leave full, coarse, and happy, but educated as well. People like to eat male crabs better than females. See, I'm opposite. <laughs> Again, no I mean, comment. Again, this is too easy. You know, it's like a big softball. You just gotta. Mm. <laughs>